You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host, and I have a brand new author right here from Brockton, Michelle Marsh. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for letting us know what you're doing. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good when people promote what they do. Yes. From the heart. Right. Okay. And the book is right here. We, we can see it on the, the wider shot. Mm -hmm. Hidden Scars. Yes. I haven't done a lot of research on it. I just met you for the first time. Why'd you write the book? Well, I wrote the book because of the fact that um, I've always been a writer mm -hmm. and I write policy now. I work for the government, I write policy. But it's fun to like write from experiences and my experiences have been some of my best teachers. So, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and I finally had time to really sit down and just do something fun and that's what I love doing is I love writing. Okay, so we're talking a little bit before we went on about how'd you get the title? Yes, Hidden Scars. Well, I went back and forth um, with Hidden Scars, Invisible Scars. I wanted something that was going to be relatable. And when you really think about it, we all have hidden scars. Mm -hmm. And I know just speaking from experience for myself, you know, I, because um, in the book, the, the uh, main character is Grace Johnson, who suffers two traumatic experiences. She has two traumatic experiences on the same day and she's learning how to push past her pain without that one person that is there to really help her. And then she's concealing her own hidden scar in which, you know, at time will reveal her hidden scar. But then you have all of the dynamics of family. So when I was writing the book and I was developing my characters, I realized that they all had hidden scars. And that is, like I said, relatable to all of us because, you know, with myself, I've gone through two traumatic experiences. I lost both of my parents. So writing from experience, even though the book is definitely fiction is made up. Um, so it was very easy for me to do, to choose hidden scars instead of invisible scars. Okay. And walk us through a little bit the process of doing this. It's not necessarily easy to write a book. How long did you take to write it? Mm -hmm. How did you get it published? Any, any tidbits you want to share? That's a good question. Um, so when I had started writing this book, it was back in October of last year. Mm -hmm. And I remember it all started with a Facebook post. I had um, made a post and then somebody had said, you know, um, you know, maybe you should write a book. And I said, you know what, maybe I should. Because again, I had started writing a book years before. So the main thing that you have to do is you just have to write. And somebody encouraged me and they said, you know what, Michelle, this time write and don't stop. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So when I would come home from work, I would write. On the weekends, I would write. So my first manuscript, I actually finished it in three weekends. Wow. Yes, in three weekends. So I started in October and I finished it in three weekends. But to get it into Hidden Scars, it took some time to just like mold it and make it and create it. Um, so what I did is I actually um, allowed family members to look at it Mm -hmm. And they gave me their honest opinion. And then that's when I kind of went back to the drawing board, kept some things, took some things out. And then I would say over the course of six months, mm -hmm. that really developed into hidden scars. Now, when you publish nowadays, it's very different in the yes. publishing world now than it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 right. years ago. Right. Is it a small publisher? Is it a big publisher? Is it a self -pub I don't know enough about that. Exactly. So what I did is, because um, again, you know, when you're writing a book, that's one of the biggest things that you really need to look into is who's going to publish my book. Um, so I happened to um, find out about a woman, Yolanda Lewis, and she's from Extreme Overflow Publishing. And I gave her a call and Yolanda and I, we spoke. And then that's when I realized that, you know what, I think that this will be a great opportunity for me because it was more or less like a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. So what Extreme Overflow Publishing does is they do everything. They do the editing, yeah. you know, they help you out, they give you guidance, you know, and then they publish your book. You know, they get the ISBN number, they do everything for you. Sure. So it was easy for me to do the creative part and write the book. And not worry about exactly, it. Exactly, and not worry about it. Do exactly. You have to lay out money to do it first? I, I know when you're, uh, uh, you know, former president of the United States, you get book yes. advances, you get tons of money. Yes. You don't pay anything. You, you just reap in the profit. <laughs> you have to pay. In this case, you have to pay. <laughs> yes, you have to pay. And that's what I liked about Extreme Overflow Publishing is because, you know, you can kind of pay in increments. Okay. So it's affordable. Okay. Because I know people that have said, you know, wow, Michelle, I self-published my book. And I know self-publishing, it can be costly. 
So I definitely would encourage anybody to definitely do your research. Mm -hmm. um, Extreme Overflow Publishing worked for me because I wanted and I needed, first of all, you know, to be able to pay in increments, right. as well as um, the guidance and all of everything that came with it, the editing, the assistance, you know, because there were times that I would send my manuscript, she would send it back to me, I would, you know, have changes. So yes, but yes, it definitely does cost money. Okay, I don't want to run out of time. You want to read an excerpt from the yes, book. Yes, I so do. So grab the book, okay. read the excerpt. They gave me the three minute cue. I think we can do it. Okay. All right, so I'll read this real quick. In between David's snores, I heard a voice from outside. I slowly walked over and pulled back the curtain to find our dead end street lit up like a Christmas tree. The cops had it blocked off, not allowing anyone but an ambulance truck to enter. Five police cruisers were in front of the house of the woman who I think found me. I watched two police officers as they stretched the do not cross tape in front of the entrance of her home while one of the officers guided the EMTs into the house. I could see the Channel 5 camera crew parked near the entrance of our street. A news reporter stood toward the corner of the house interviewing old man Joe as he pointed his cane up in the direction of our two-family apartment building. Fifteen minutes later, I saw them roll a body out on a stretcher. Although a sheet covered the dead body, I could see the bottom of the deceased bright orange bloodied croc shoes oh my god i gasped wow descriptive <laughs> very job. descriptive good job so how would people get in touch i think i got less than a minute to buy the book is it amazon how does that yes happen? if you are interested in purchasing the book it is on amazon.com it is also on barnes and nobles nook and kindle so you can have it the book form or you can have it the electronic form exactly yes well, thank yes. you. And, thank you so uh, much. I, we have the library director coming on another yes. episode of this show, and maybe we can get you over at the BPL, too. I look forward to that. Thank you so much. Pleasure thank you for having you. me. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.